I got the most amazing species. I'm talking about bucket list species, ones I thought I would never own, and it's all because, well, of you. And today, I wanna talk just about that. My name's Adam, this is Diamond, you're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. I get to do a lot of cool things and get to get a lot of, get to get, get to get a lot of really cool animals. And it's really because of you. Basically, I go to reptile expos, I get to host them, I get to be the face of the franchise, basically. I'm just the mouthpiece that just talks about reptile expos, more or less. I get to talk to people, meet people, and because of it, I get a little, hey, did you know that I've got this or that? And most people don't get that. So I'm really lucky, and the reason I'm in that position is because of, well, this channel. And the reason this channel is successful is because of you. So right off the bat, thanks. You guys are awesome. More or less, this weekend, I went to the Toronto Reptile Expo, and the weekend before that, or two weekends before that, I went to the Ottawa Pet Expo, which was amazing, by the way. If you don't know, Ottawa is the capital of Canada. It's not Toronto. It's about six hours from here. It was really fun, and I want to say thanks to, well, Reptile Expo's Canada Pet Expo, the whole team, for having me on frogs. You're not even the ones we're talking about today. Hint, hint. We'll talk about the expos in a second. But first of all, I want to introduce you to the very first species of the video that I got, basically. These are Stenodactylus. Now, there are two different species that are most common in the, yes, these are the doom geckos or elegant sand finger geckos or the ones that Daffy's Reptiles and Reptiliatus talk about all the time and I've been talking about since I got back from Ottawa last year when I saw them at Daffy's. These guys are amazing. Now the Petri or Petri or whatever you wanna call them, these guys are, well, bigger. The Stenodactylus Stenodactylus are smaller but probably more prevalent. The difference between what I have and what I would like people to see, or like people to get rather, are the Petri or Petri that I have were wild caught. I always advocate for getting captive bred specimens. The problem with certain animals is we have to bring them into the wild, make them popular, or start breeding them rather is the first step, then make them popular so that they're captive bred specimens, but it kind of goes hand in hand. You want everyone to get a captive bred specimen, but a lot of the times it takes a popularity for these things to become, well, popular enough for people to get in the first place and then you have breeders like me because of guys like Daffy's Reptiles who showed me the species that bring them in, show them on the internet to hundreds of thousands of people, they become popular, there's a demand, then there's an incentive for people to breed these things because captive bred are always better or almost always better than wild caught. They don't have the parasites that come in with them. They don't have to be shipped. They don't have to be taken away from the wild. That's what we're trying to do with sand geckos. I'm feeding them very tiny crickets and even fruit flies to the babies, big fruit flies, the high eyes. So they're not the easiest thing to find food for unless you live in a place where there's a reptile store. So if you're one of these people who lives in, I don't know, Nova Scotia, best of luck getting the right food for them at a reptile store, because there are none, basically. There's gonna be the one reptile store in Nova Scotia that no one's ever heard of that messages me. Please do, I would love to know if you exist. I feel like this is all over the place. The point is, I got some Stenodactylus in Ottawa. I bought basically everything that Foddy from Daffy's Reptiles didn't buy, so they were completely cleaned out. And of course, the big ones, the Petris, Petris, whatever you wanna call them, you can keep them in groups so even males don't fight most of the time. Do your research first. I'm gonna do a care guide sooner than later. I'm gonna have the big species, the small species. They don't need huge enclosures. They're fun to watch, they're bold. You can handle them, you can pick them up. They're just amazing. I really think that they're going to increase in popularity and I'm hoping that myself and Dion and Foddy can create quite a few opportunities for people to buy them captive bread. And then I, all of us are in Canada, but hopefully in the US, we can get a lot down there too. Now I wanna tell you about a species also that I got that I couldn't even believe, I had to double take. I was with one of the uh, employees of the show. I actually had a booth this year. I've never had a booth before. So at these reptile expos, I normally just walk around. I was selling shirts and geckos and stuff. So thank you guys so much for buying if you did buy. But one of the ladies that I had with me to help me, uh, I was walking around with her looking for you know projects for next year. And I couldn't even believe what I saw. Could not even believe what I saw. But at this expo, amazing time. So fantastic, honestly. Uh, everything looked amazing layout there were so many cool animals but there was one species that i've always wanted especially since i came back from madagascar 
and I'll let you guess what it is. But either way, there's obviously a lot of driving involved, and I go in style, and it smells great in my truck, even with all these animals. Thanks to today's sponsor, Drift. You guys have seen me advertise for Scentbird before. I genuinely use Scentbird every single day on my body, but it's not just me that needs to smell good, it's my vehicle too, and my truck always smells good, thanks to Drift. All products that Drift uses are sustainable and their scents are made with natural essential and fragrance oils. Also, their products range from nine to $15, so no one's breaking the bank to make their vehicle smell awesome. What's cool about car fresheners is that you can get them as a subscription. First, you get a clip and a scent, and then you can get refills. So every 30 days, which is what they recommend you change at, you can get a new scent to match the season. This month I got Spirits. It has rum, whiskey, just the smokiest, most amazing scents, notes of this scent that I can think of. It really reminds me of the season that I'm in. And of course, nose blindness is a real thing. So you might get used to certain scents, but what's gonna help you is if the car freshener in your vehicle is going to change. And with Drift, every 30 days, you can change. It also helps Drift stick to its sustainability message and produce almost made to order products. The subscription is very flexible. You can change your scent choice, delivery frequency, or cancel your subscription at any time. So make sure you use coupon code WWR to get up to 55% off your first order when you click the link below. That's less than $5 for your first month. Click the link below, use code WWR for 55% off your first order. Thanks Drift and let's get back to the video. I've been looking and I'm not joking, since I got back from Madagascar in January for this species, anywhere I could find them, even if I could import them and I could not find them. And I'm just walking along la di da through the expo and sure enough, they're there. Obviously before that I had a little fun with my friends from uh, YouTube who you guys probably already know. Yeah. Adam. How do you feel about reptile expos? I love reptile expos. I attend every single reptile expo. I am going to get reptile expo tattooed here and on my forehead. Uh, <laughs> why should, why should people come to the expo? Why should people come to the expo? People should come to the expos for first, main and most important reason is the community aspect. Everybody comes out. You get to meet the most awesome breeders, the most awesome keepers. Um, you know, it's really the big name here. The big word here is community. It's the only place to meet awesome people like Charles. Um, yeah, so other than that, obviously, buying reptiles. You gotta buy reptiles, you want plants, there's plants. Guys, I, I can't speak highly enough, and I'm, I'm not just saying this because I work for the expo, I can't speak highly enough of the expo. Come out, they're a lot of fun every single time, and if you're not here, you're missing it. What's the best part about hanging with Daffy's reptiles? Um, he smells, so that's that's not fun. Um, but he's pretty funny. Yeah? Yeah. Funny looking? Funny looking. Yeah. Why are you at the expo today? I don't know. Selling down. Okay. And how do you feel about that? Wonderful. Wonderful? <laughs> what do you have to sell that you should show me? We have some cool tachydromas for sale that I should show you. Yeah. Okay. Can you please show me a tachydromas? Yeah, they're in the beautiful display right oh here. Oh my goodness. Those that are actually for sale over here. Four and a half months old. Mike, I have a question. Yes. Why should somebody buy a tachydromas? Uh, because they're the coolest display lizard around. They okay. are bright green, they are always out, and they're diurnal. Unlike most animals, most geckos that we typically keep in captivity, they hide all day and then are out at night. And unfortunately, people like myself who work during the day and are home in the evening, these guys are actually out, whereas most nocturnals aren't. Final question. Yeah. If you could rate the way that Dion smells from 1 to 10, how would you rate him? Today, uh, what's, what's 10? 10 is good. Seven and a half? Great, I'll let him know. Hey LaRoche, what are you That's doing in the expo today? Oh, I'm just bugging Adam. That's my only purpose here. I even dressed very similarly to him. We have jeans. Uh, we have a little bit of red, some mm -hmm. some black t-shirt, you know? I, I just want to be like him, really. What's the, uh, the coolest reptile you've seen so far? Besides Dion. Can I do what you do and cheat with an amphibian? Yes. Okay, if you come right over here, Moroccan green toad. I have never seen these before, and they really caught my eye. They have this beautiful pink coloration with this mossy green, and they're just derpy toads. There's so, not much more to say other than 
I want them. <laughs> it's a derpy boy. It is a derpy boy. I've not seen food, but I have seen DVM. DVM, why do you come to these expos? Uh, they pay me to be here. And, and, and what's, what do they pay you to do? I make sure the animals look healthy and happy. And how's that going? Pretty well. Yeah? No real issues today. I think there were two snakes in cages that were maybe a bit small, but nothing major. Would you like to buy all my geckos? No. Okay, thanks for your time. You're welcome. Anyway, enough suspense. And there they were, golden mantellas. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's a really cool dart frog species. No, these are not dart frogs. Dart frogs are from Central and South America. Mantellas are from Madagascar. Madagascar was one of the coolest places I've ever been. There's a video right here. Please watch it. I don't like I have so much more footage. I would love to make more videos about Madagascar, but nobody watches them. I don't know why. Let me know in the comment section below. Why don't you watch the travel videos? Anyway, golden mantellas are amazing. They look like a gummy bear version of a Philobitus tribulus. The yellow ones or the orange ones rather, the blackfoots, but they don't have black feet. They're smaller and they're from, well, the old world, not the new world. Basically, these guys are poisonous, just like poison dart frogs. It's convergent evolution which means that, for example, uh, green tree pythons, emerald tree boas, they look very similar, but they're in different parts of the world. They evolved completely separately. Same thing here. So the gold mentalas are not related to the dart frogs, even though they're kept by dart frog people. And the guy who I bought them from had dart frogs I've never seen before. But either way, bought them, great price, got some cool plants with them. I'm gonna set them up in an amazing enclosure. If you wanna see a build of me by building an enclosure, let me know in the comment section below. I do it. But anyway, what makes them so cool is mantellas, especially gold mantellas, are, they're poached in the wild. There's really not a lot of regulation in Madagascar. It's a very poor country. So people are more concerned about, you know, staying alive and feeding their families than anything else. I've been there. It's like no other place on the entire planet. I can't even describe it in words. So conservation is difficult. I mean, lemurs are going to be extinct by the time you and I are in an old folks home. I promise you, they're going to be completely gone. Most of that country is deforested and the rest of it is not really being protected with any sort of might. So mantellas will be extinct in the wild, likely also in our lifetime. So to have them here and try to breed them and have something so amazing to show you honestly is a privilege and an honor so so go to reptile expos you'll find stuff you don't find anywhere else if you're in canada the reptile expo is here they're basically all put on by the same company uh i get to be there at all of them come say hello and i want to say thanks to all of you hit like and subscribe you guys are amazing if you want to see more videos like this about certain animals in my collection should i stick the top fives let me know as always thanks to the patreon supporters you guys get videos early discounts on merch you guys get a whole bunch of that and more for as little as $1 a month. Oh, and one-on-ones. I've got a bunch of them today that I have to do still. So, well, then I have to, very excited. Anyway, because we do videos on Mondays and Thursdays, that means I'll see you in the next one. Thank you, Drift, for partnering with me. Click the link in the description.